Viewer discretion is advised. All right, guys. So I'm sorry for this 30 second thing, but I just want to say something real quick. I just want to say, first of all, if I offend anybody or anybody finds this video offensive, I highly apologize for that. Reason why we're doing it like this, well, these kind of videos is because when we play things like this, it, we just can't really stand, you know, and not make a joke about certain things because we try to keep the video interesting, funny, etc., etc., etc. So again, don't take anything to heart. We're just messing around. And when things do get real, we probably will stop making jokes. So yeah, just enjoy the video, guys. Take care. All right, so how's it going, guys? We're back with part two of Doki Doki. So like I was saying, uh, yeah, the first part was kind of interesting. It really wasn't all that much. Uh, I was doing some research into that poem that Monica gave us. So Kenny, remember how you said it was a glory hole at first? You were right. Yeah. You were right. It was? You were right. 100%. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you confirm that she got raped, though? I, I thought she got raped, because that's how it sounded like. But anyway, we got another guest here in this part two to make this game more interesting, see? Because I like hearing a lot of, like, opinions from every person I bring in. So today we got Jesus, uh, also a good friend of mine, funny too. He gives a lot of logical explanations as well. So yeah, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. And he's in taco. And in the taco. No, I'm yeah, not. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go All ahead right. and edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Yeah, so. <laughs> hey, this is. I can name them surgeon! No guts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alright, looks like you're in a good mood today. Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. As I'm saying, but I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? What? That's not like you yeah, at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Alright. Why that all of a sudden? Alright, Kenny, you, you tag in. Uh, no reason really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh huh. Wait, am I clicking or are you clicking? I'm clicking. Why are you clicking? I have the game on my- oh, hey, shit. Now, Yeah, I was clicking for a second. I was like, wait, hold on. Oh, what? Not in the game. Uh, sorry, never see what choose her coin first. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. There we go. Open this. Then she turns it upside down and let its contest spin until the door. Only two small coins fall off. Damn, she broke! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. Actually, what? since before we go um, a little bit forward, yo, Hazers, we when we first played this game because we had a little bloopers, we we named the character you like <laughs> Hazu, and the fact that he was saying some fucked up shit, and then we were just like, yeah, this is sounds like Hazu said to be. Thanks. <laughs> How did you even know? The simple. Oh wait, it's simple. Uh, you, if you had enough money in the first place, you wouldn't have bought a snack before coming to the cabo. Got him. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk. See, it sounds like hazes, bro. Like, instigating ass. Yo, facts, yo. Or you <laughs> plan to conveniently forget where you spent all your money, so that I will lend you some. Hey. Nice you're a gold digger. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. For the people, yeah. <laughs> and so that only leaves that one option. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me feel guilty. I so <laughs> I, I'm a sub it, yeah. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh -huh. <sighs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was <laughs> listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah, I wasn't listening or anything. <laughs> I was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Surgeon to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. That's what I'm saying. Yo, pa. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <sighs> Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got to absorb it in my book. Uh, and then laugh, laugh, laugh sound effect. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. <laughs> It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. <laughs> That's there's no way you can, you can think of that. You were right though. I did something bad, and I I have to accept the uh, the revolution, retribution. Yo, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, that purple bitch looking slim, thick. 
It's still coming from you, Sayori. I guess it's a little. <laughs> I guess it's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't, Don't you want to smash the girl from my hero? Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Laugh sound effect. What? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Pop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is it this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. Ah, uh, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> <Guess it's safe. laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's <I> can't. cute. <laughs> That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. <coughs> Fuck. I <laughs> already hugs the cookie. <laughs> Jeez, just eat it! I'm cringing. <laughs> <laughs> Sayori rapidly te tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh my dick. So good! Mm. How the fuck do I even do that? Alright, <laughs> 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 right, Kenny, you sub in. Uh, Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> <laughs> You're going through a lot. Just oh, just one cookie. Yo, I can't fucking read. Natsuki <laughs> takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? There's enough eco for everybody. Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. Facts. Boy, yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Damn! Damn! Fine. Press F for respect. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Aww. <laughs> my turn. Gets out of her oh. oh, my bad. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Asuki and then wraps her arms around her. Hey. <laughs> Jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to just nudge Sayori off of her. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki Kuki. Yo, what's going on? Oi! Did you seriously just do that? Hot. <laughs> I, I can't do that sound effect. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. <laughs> have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. That's a fact. Hey, that's true. <laughs> Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't oh, mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. <laughs> What's going on with you, Asus? <laughs> Monica chose to club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Oh wait, Asus. Yeah, you're right. You're not an otaku, bro. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica qu quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. Well, I'd hold you up anyway. Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. By the way, I saw one of PewDiePie's first parts of this. The nigga goes, Well, my last period today was study hall. And I started dying, bro, on the girl <laughs> voices. I started dying. To be honest. Uh, Kenny, I'm, admi I'm simply admiring that white ribbon that she's, she has wearing, bro. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, I, I could, I could, I used to have long hair. So seeing that feels mad uncomfortable. Because, like, I used to have, um, oh, I forgot what they're called. Hair ties? Yeah, I used to have hair ties. And over time, the weight of your hair pulls down so so much to the point where your roots start hurting. That could. Just... Anyway, 
That's so cool. Your, your brother told me. You should play something for us, Monica. That's Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I play in piano. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I wouldn't let you down, surgeon. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really Ooh. love the chance to share once I'm ready. Ooh. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. <laughs> so I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to. I choose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Nasuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Iri is back to her book and Atsuki disappeared into the closet. Wow. Surgeon, okay, surgeon. Oh, your turn? Alright. Sayori suddenly comes up to me. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some supplies from another class. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna come with me? S supplies? What for? Well, you know, for the festival's coming up. <laughs> me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> sure, I'll go with you. Getting mad into I like it. Yay! <laughs> okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. <laughs> 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 I'd be happy to go with him. Oh my god. Oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. I can't. Okay, I gotta focus. Um, Kenny, your turn. <laughs> okay, go ahead, bro. <laughs> I say you, yeah. You already said this. Oh. It was just a suggestion. See. You gotta get into it. If you can. I... <laughs> no. See, if you can find poster paper too, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> ready, surgeon? Oh, she's ready for the procedure. Yep, let's go. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Sayori and I exit the classroom. Room. What the fuck? I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, I feel like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Mm -hmm. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we going to do for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. What? <laughs> Alright. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? <laughs> yep. We're gonna do a poetry perform- ah, That sounds really gay, I'm sorry. <laughs> a performance? <laughs> of what kind? one that rolls guts well everyone is going to take turns on stage whoa and recite their favorite poem man if i was there i would have been like nah you see this is where you cap <laughs> <laughs> uh that sounds kind of dull damn <laughs> you're not thinking about it the right way at all it's not just about being in poem <clears throat> It's about performing. Alright, yo, my turn. Like, you say the lines of the poem, like, between my feet. The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist with a stem, feeling <laughs> it from its clinging roots. What is this? Caressing the final joyish moments between my fingers. But to what ends I have I summoned this joy? Nah, I can't do My voice starts hurting. <clears throat> For when I look in every direction, the once preposterous, wait, prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sorry. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but that's it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? Facts. You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? Uh, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say it like that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I, I guess so. 
I, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayuri spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, surgeon, this class over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. <laughs> the mission, eh? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's been a long time to spend with time with Sayuri like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori be brings out a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons. Sayori pulls a book full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box reading the colored names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Well, I'm looking for my favorite color. Oh shit. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Hello. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smacked. Um, yeah! Sorry, Ben's over. On the computer. As Max, her forehead ran into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crane spell over okay. her, her lap. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Geez, Sayori. That's just <laughs> like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. Whoa. Oh, we getting. <laughs> it's the game, 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 game. <laughs> How many times did we say that yesterday, Kenny? I said it, okay, I mentioned it like four times, but the fourth time I mentioned too many games. So this is this is where the game, 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 game. Game, oh. big game. <laughs> nah, dude, this is not a game, game. This is the end game. Nah, he already made that joke yesterday. Ah, uh, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I know. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow, sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Damn, she's fragile. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Surgeon? What do you even find some ice around this time? I guess I could... I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, I really makes a silly joke. Yo, who says that? <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pass higher in the shoulder and run into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it would be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm really tr returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. <coughs> she has one pawn on her forehand and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before oh, I spilled them. I just looked up and I see this. <laughs> I see crayons spilled over. Like, can somebody pick them up? <laughs> 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 yeah, so you're in the bottom. Yo, shut <laughs> yeah, for real. So I opens the cap and starts drinking from it. So you're already, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, Baka. Yo, bro, pick up the box of Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? It stinks. Very hard. Just hard. burr with it. It'll be better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, surgeon, this kind of reminds you of gro of you growing up, doesn't it? Uh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fall behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Surgeon, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. This reminds me of Ninja Girls from back then, yeah. I think Hayes knows what I'm talking about. You're rushing oh, to <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I've never seen that shit on Facebook, bro. I'm like, yo, what, what the fuck is this shit on my, on my time, man? And then it's like, Pose it likes Mo Ninja Girls. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, what in the porn? Ah, the golden era. I said, what in the porn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling when we'll reach um, or what each end up for college or after that, so it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But well, I hope so. It'll be this long already. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sorry has a whimsical expression in her eyes. <coughs> Remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her dip deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. 
She's gonna see your forehead either way. <laughs> Not if I hide under my bangs. Okay, wait, now it's my turn. Alright. Sayori hops to her feet. <laughs> <laughs> she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast as for hurting yourself. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I guess it's too late, too late now. Anyway, let's go. <clears throat> I follow so you're out of the classroom. <clears throat> So I replaced with her bangs to try to hide the bomb, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah! You're back! <laughs> Good timing! I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh? Sayori, your forehead! <laughs> she noticed. She's fine, don't worry about <laughs> well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh huh. <laughs> I have it right here. Sounds yeah. like Mickey Mouse. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> so you're frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. <laughs> Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. Sheesh! Found the poster paper too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Virgin. <laughs> ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. <laughs> for Sayori. <laughs> I made it an adventure. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> In any case, good work. I can see Hazus is used to these kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you're capping. You cap. <laughs> I'll start working on the posters <laughs> Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? <laughs> oh, here we go. This is where Kenny. Remember how the first time we shared our poems and it got kind of weird? Yeah. Yeah. Guess here we go again. Guess oh. I should grab mine. Oh, damn! What he grabbing? His his poem. Me and Kenny. <laughs> okay, so what? <laughs> They're making sure the crayon <laughs> box is locked. It's closed. I, the I return to my seat. It's pickle mode. Yeah. Uh, please have a seat here, sir. I. Uh, who should we open first, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> always. Do say already, bro. That's always just Monica. Gonna... Let's get. Monica, but <clears throat> Alright. Hi again, Surgeon. How's the uh, writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. Whoa. As long mm. as it's not going bad. Fuck, I was gonna make a reference, never mind. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Oy! I could just imagine like somebody walking the <laughs> room. Catch me saying this, and they'll be oh, like, Oh, wait, wait, this is Surgeon. Uh huh. huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, I hope you know they're on in high school, so his voice might be like, Ha ha ha. Uh huh. Huh. I wouldn't count on that. Was, go, go, Kenny. You'll never know. Want to share what you vote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem, I thought that said Pico for a second, to Monica. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. All right, it's pretty good. It makes me think of sorry or like the other one that you wrote. What? Okay, hold on. Why is she mentioning her name twice? Bro, because think about it. If you had a best friend like that and you guys are always chilling alone and crap. Ew. But she's the only one who's seen it. I know, right? And that other one we did it specifically was only for, um, what's her name? Yuri, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. we chose so many words for her, but whatever. Yo, what the hell is that noise? Uh, ha, ha. This guy's beating his pico. Keep going, Kenny. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Who's this said he's beating his pico? And <laughs> he's like, yeah, probably. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? F all, yeah. Then again, I don't blame your suit yeah. for being a little shy. I'm not shy. It's just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh -huh. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. 
But Yuri and Asuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can't talk to me every now and then. And you can talk to me every now and, and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright, but anyway. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Alright, so who wants to read this? <coughs> Save me! The colors, oh, they it. won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. Motherfucker, <laughs> where the fuck did you jump to? <laughs> oh. <laughs> An endless... What the fuck? <laughs> Cockphony. <laughs> Cockphony. <laughs> of meaningless I, noise. It doesn't own it. Cockophony. Keep saying that I'm gonna put my cock in your mouth. Like what? <laughs> oh. The right. noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeak, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Bro, she... Sand, cosine, sand, what whoa, the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like playing a trackboard on a turn up on a turn up like playing a minute yeah. on a pizza crust. A meaningless. Oh, hi. The fuck? Nah, she got she got penetrated. Load me! I told you! Whoa! No! Let, let me reread that. Save me, the colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. <laughs> the noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. <laughs> piercing. Sign, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a Veno. Turn the phone! <laughs> <laughs> like playing a Veno on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Damn, Whoa. yo, just like this poem was short, my appearance was short. Damn, you I'm gotta be out. Alright, yo, take it easy, man. Wait, he's leaving? Yeah. Damn. It's all good, so it's just you and me, Kenny. Just like part one. Alright, hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a, a kind of thing that I've never really seen before, I guess. Yeah! I mean, what, can, you, can you say anything like that, Kenny? <laughs> I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing whether and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's also like magic. Uh, the way I wrote the lines really short makes you feel like they're sp trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's Whoa. still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Oh, save it. That scared me, not gonna lie. That's breaking the fourth wall, son. Yeah, it is. The third and the fourth and the fifth. Or when something unexpected may happen. Oh! Scared. This is the game, 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 game. <laughs> <laughs> the game is finally beginning. Wait, is this tip even about right? Oh! This is the game times 10, yeah? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm shook. <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was unexpected. Alright. She's the second weirdest. Your turn, Kenny. Whew. You really got penetrated. That's crazy. I, I told you! The first one was a glory hole. You were right. Yeah, I was right, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, I was not holding the wall. I'm just like, the first thing <laughs> on my head, on my perverted mind, was glory hole. I'm like, alright, maybe it's just me. No, I, yeah, you were right. Like, she's looking in, and somebody's looking out, and then we're talking about holes, and I'm just like, uh huh? <laughs> you know? And then, and then as, as soon as that poem, like, there's like mass space, and you said, load me. That, that basically says she got penetrated. And there's a third part to this, bro. I'm excited for it. I'm not, I'm getting nervous. All right, your turn. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see what you've written for today. Mm. Well done, surgeon. I knew she would like it. Your skills are already improving. Bro, you just pick random points. Right? Nah, I, cho I chose specific ones for her, like like catastrophic, intellectual. Like she likes big words, so she likes big things. Uh, yeah. 
You can say that. Thanks, Yuri. <laughs> Coming from you, that means a lot. Get it. Sorry, I'm reading something. Alright, cool. Uh, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. Inspire, huh? I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much. It seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. Damn, she's still roasting. Yo, facts. Uh huh. Uh, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Whoa! Metaphors can go a long way. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel like don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. Uh, it's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. 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 Thank you for sharing. I have um, well, an example of that. If you'd like to read it. Okay, here we go, yo. I'm kind, I'm kind of excited, yo. <sighs> of course. Oh. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and Timely hands me her poem. All right, so you want to read this one? All right. Oh my God, this handwriting. Yo, facts. This is, cool. is this gonna be racist? It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside of my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies. As in... Unordinary human. Unordinary human. Unordinary human. Okay. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. It doesn't even sound like a poem. It sounds like exactly what it's doing. Yeah. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. Ah, uh, bread. The bread. My hungry curiosity. The, the raccoon. An urge. Urge. Whoa! Hold up. Uh. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. Huh? The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. Ah. Uh, Huh? Raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. What? Classic, classic Pavlonian conditioning. Once I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Mm, that's, that's a big. That's a big. Christian. Facts. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't even begin to imagine what this poem is about. Yo, facts. <laughs> That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imaginary imagery and conveying emotions through them. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, if I take it as a face value, then I can't fit even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that something something that different people can relate in. <laughs> to it in their own way i wanted no, to ex yeah. an Asian actor, you're like something something i wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my, my more unusual hobbies it's those sort of things that i'm usually forced to keep myself so i sometimes enjoy writing about them why do you keep them to yourself B because they're embarrassing and people will make fun of me don't you have anything like that surgeon well yeah i guess i do i feel like everyone has a little something like that the best we can do is respect each other and our individual. Hey, respect women, yeah. And individualities, <laughs> even if it's something, even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things can make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You girl, yeah. So, Nasuki next, or Sayori? Who do you think, Kenny? Uh, let's say the Sayori last. Ah, I thought you meant first. Be my people. 
Surgeon, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me I haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way, not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is at least like to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think it's like that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems than I'm thinking about you. Oh, Pick them up. <laughs> eh? Oh, wait, 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 wait. It eh? sounds like... Hold on, hold on. Wait for it, wait for it. It sounds like... Uh... Damn it. Uh... Hold on, it's funny. Trust me. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. No, add. Yeah, hold on. What the f Yo, okay, alright, I want you to say what are you gonna say right now? Like say repeat that. Pico mode? No no no, no. <laughs> the, the last line before this one. Huh? The last line before this. Where you like thinking about you. Pico mode? No! I forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, oh it's easier when I think about it. when I'm writing poems I think about you. It's easier when I think about you. Oh my god, bro. You went all that trouble for this? Yeah, bro. Fuck. Fuck you. How am I supposed to How am I supposed to How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life, but you somehow make everything in your life an adventure? Even the little things, like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you. Then I can write it through myself. Well, we have that. Well, we have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Uh, Sai, you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Sayori starts finding with her pencil between her hands. Hey, surgeon, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you're reading something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely mis misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> I, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when I go get home. Really? I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up that piece, the, the piece she dropped. But being an attendant for her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get Definitely it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the dust behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah, I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Alright, my turn. Sheesh, this one's cute. Bottles. I pop off my so my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. That's a weird introduction. It's the secret yeah. place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in the bottle to keep it safe. What? Okay. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Wait, what, what she put in the bottle of her hair? No, uh, it says, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach in inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and out. tingly. I guess her brain? I, I don't know, but there's no time to waste. I put in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottle all in a row. So I'm guessing they're all bottle, uh, happy thoughts? My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Me after night, after night more dreams, friend after friend more, ba more bottles. Deeper and deeper my finger goes. Likes exploring Whoa. a dark cave, discovering the secret hiding in the nooks and crannies, dinging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust no. off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I fran frantically put all them from the shelf, one after another. Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between my feet. What? Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, playing something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Huh? I, I was kind of confused. It sounded like she was, uh... Um... 
Yeah, and then all of a sudden. Yeah. Wait, wait, read the read. The, let me read the last part again. Oh, uh, finally all done. I opened up and in come my friends. Okay. And they come in such a hurry. Okay. You want my bottles that much? <laughs> I frantically pulled them from the shelf. Is this a dildo reference? One after the other. I don't think Holding so. Them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against. Why she said that twice? Oh, uh, no. The tile. Oh, okay. Between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who are smiling. They're all shouting, please. All I hear is echo five times. Inside my head. That, that part throws me off. Facts. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Well, it could tell me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I, I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Facts! Creepy? Big facts. Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helped mm -hmm. me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Haha, <laughs> don't, ha, ha, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. And the last but not least... The bitch. Natsuki. <laughs> Alright, your turn, man. I'm all read out. Hmm. Wait, wait. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's, not really, it's not really any worse than your last one. Wow. But I can't really say it's any better either. Yo, like, yo, thirteen-year-old is about to catch these bottles. Nigga, she's about to catch some palms, bro. She's about to catch these. Uh, yeah, right now. Uh, few. <laughs> huh? Few what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it as a one. And I get that feeling you're probably the most critical. <laughs> Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Uh-huh. Glad to see someone recognize my experience. I'm getting out of myself. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be good as me someday. Kiss my ass. <laughs> I said, that's uh... Something tells me that Suki completely missed the point. Yeah, but she ain't gonna miss these pants. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. What? Huh? You think so? Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for a long, for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. Wow. Sounds like people, bro. Well, you never really struck me as her type. Yo, what do you know about type? Like type? Yeah. Honestly, I when I see like females, not dudes, really. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck my dialogue. Well, I don't know, but no, no. When you talk, I do that. Like when you try to say something, I just keep pressing it because I feel like the viewer just wants to keep reading. But I mean, and then there is also want to hear your dialogue. Just keep going. I just keep doing this so that way you can tell your dialogue while the, while the viewer is still, you know, reading. I mean, I think they can read. We could just like, you know, click it every like ten seconds. That's what I'm guess. saying. Yeah. So we're just talking background, I guess. Yeah. yeah let's do that. Yeah, there's a couple times where I think females and I know what their type is. Oh, yeah? Like, without a doubt. Like, I remember I had this co-worker and she was having trouble going out with another co-worker. Uh-huh. And then I couldn't see it. Like, nah, you guys, like, nah, I don't see you guys ever together. And then she gave me, like, a puzzled look and she's like, oh, Amy uh, likes spiders. Go All ahead. All right, we'll hold off on the story. Yeah. Uh, you know what I've heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Like a love song. Every time she sang the curse, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. Mm. 
but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. When I like, <laughs> I like the background music. Yeah, like they're like she's stupid. Yeah. One time I heard my wow. One time I heard my <laughs> friend really bad. Amy, oh my leg. Oh, well, I read that correctly. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Is she like racist or something? What's going on? I don't know. She has a lot of friends. I see her talking to people. Like usually when people are racist, they don't or like they're homophobic. Yeah. Hmm. Like, like, you're right. You're right. I from those type of people. That's why I said it. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. One of her friends starts to like spiders too. Uh, mm. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has all the hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell her. Yeah, you right? Oh, this is subliminal, bro. <laughs> like, what's going on? Yo, this is oh. the. This is the. Game, 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 game. Yeah, this is the game, 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 game. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So this is where. Okay, so every time when we go, yeah. at, every, at every single part, we're um, <laughs> just like, yo, what's going on? That's the part where we keep on questioning. This is like what the seventh time, just like, huh? Yeah, yo, I this, yeah. This is this is subtly referencing her friend Amy liking something. I'm guessing she's a, a lesbian and she likes females. This shit's getting yo. This shit's getting yo. This is getting pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just take it as poems, but they can actually be like represent what they're feeling. M like Monica just came out as hard in the beginning, the glory hole, and now the second time she went deeper. She's like, "What did we say it was?" She got a what? Deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the first one talks about a glory hole, and then she got caught, and then it talked about infinite holes, and then the second one was about being penetrated, basically. Yeah. Yo, have you noticed when she was being penetrated, she was thinking about math formulas? Yeah, I'm... Uh, like, imagine, imagine getting... Ooh, getting the shudders. I'm getting the oh, shudders. Getting, sh <laughs> getting the shivers, bruh. And all you hear, all you see in your mind is the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> uh, Alright, and this one is about her, like you said, being homophobic or being racist. I think she's homophobic? Simply because... She likes something. See, I, see, I'm yeah. One time, I hurt my leg really bad, and Amy held me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. Like she didn't let Amy touch her. She likes spiders, yeah, so her yeah. fans are probably gross. Yeah. Like, that's a sign of her being disgusted. Yeah. This is the game game. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, right? Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. It was just warming. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. And wait, anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Can you explain it? <laughs> Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would, would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Ah, do you know pe people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what? You just busted up the side. Mm, I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you But that just makes people stupid who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes me them happy I think people really, really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things huh? Black woman, yeah? That's yeah, what I'm saying Yuri wrote about something similar today Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah, she said her poem was about an unusual hobby her What was Yuri's again? Yo, I have a horrible like, I have goldfish memory Yuri was about uh, feeding that raccoon. Oh, yeah! Yeah, hmm. That people that people shouldn't really make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, yours is pretty weird, so I would wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's like I wouldn't judge her anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want you to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, I'm excited for these poems now in every in every chapter. Are you? Not really, bro, because like... It's getting spooky, right? Hit us with the, with the glory home. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, I'm getting, I'm getting like the shivers. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ear rape. I'm sorry, guys. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. I'm pretty bad right now. What happened? No, it's because I'm playing a game as this is going on. And I just replenish my energy. My, uh, energy. <laughs> Up and it's just yeah, don't worry. That's what I'm reading it for you. It's not that like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's just a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to do. be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're just. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a pe poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let every anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sorry is putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, who's been coloring a poster holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting these posters up, do did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you, do you really think it's a bad time? Yeah, do you really think it's that bad of an idea? <laughs> Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nasuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. <laughs> Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nasuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Mm -hmm. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll, we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, <laughs> being intimate with yourself, yeah. finding, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? With others? To yeah. inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? <laughs> I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all t and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting the poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. Oh. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little. Well, maybe, but it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Ooh. All right, phew. Thanks, Nasuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expanded faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each, each other. N no way, Monica. This is too <laughs> sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? <sighs> oh no. Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to, be, to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Oh, here we go, another poem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her in inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line. Also, oh, like, I guess it's the one we just read. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica, so everybody looks amazed. Yuri has an intense impression on her that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished her rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping you set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? I'll go next. Whoa. Wow, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a, piece of a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeps her hand down. She walks quickly over the podium. This poem is called... Yuri actually glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. So the poem we just read is called After Image of a Crimson Eye, is it? Or no? No, 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 no. This is a different one. Yusheka says she starts her... Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice has changed. It's almost as like what happened... What happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books? Bro, her I'm quiver. trying to get guts, bro. I'm rearranging. <laughs> <laughs> the poem is full of twists and turns in the structure that she... Enunciates, enunciates, bleh, with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse with into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... 
is up to me to save the situation. <laughs> I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the pump to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Metal. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reacting to your, reciting to yourself like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your own poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. See, I see. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I wouldn't think much of it. But hearing her come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe mm. this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through yeah. and through. Mm. Sayori finishes and we <laughs> applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Everyone's even Surgeon liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It comes out, it came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. Oh. But it might oh. but it might be that the other poems wouldn't work out as well with a kind of oh, other. Man. Oh the fucking Whoa. That's one because I wasn't more. Okay. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poem of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work out as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Wait, 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 wait. hold on. Did she just say force? Basically, that's well. I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Surgeon. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Surgeon lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Damn! Natsuki! Yo, Ipiko, yeah? I might as well get over with it. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what you read. It's, I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and stand in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, make me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Nasuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Nasuki begrudgingly gets out of this, her seat and mics her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Nasuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude dis disappears a little. While she's a little unenthused, that's how you say it? Her poem. Uh, un unenthused. Yeah, yeah. Her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Nasuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when she's spoken out loud. The world, the words she feels like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Nasuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ha, <laughs> well, do you at least feel prepared enough to reset a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for the other people. When it, but when it's just my friend, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Nasuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess is that in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want you to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're fitting, putting in all this effort to the club. It makes me really happy. Hey, ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been a, it's been working out for it's been working out really nice for uh, so far, uh, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Where did you go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, ha. Huh. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, sir. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Oh, 
<coughs> I walk home with Sayori once more. <laughs> Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today Sayori's are being a little quieter than usual on the way home. No, this guy's annoying. Hey Sayori. Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get you. I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say that one day you already asked to walk home with you, huh? Hey, Kenny. Wait, what happened? She just she was like, so let's just say one day you already asked to walk home with you, and this is where you come in, Kenny. Wait, I didn't hear you. Your your voice broke up for a second. So she's like, so imagine you already asked to walk home with you one day, and now this is where you come in. Oh okay. Oh yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> huh? <laughs> <laughs> What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, Kenny. What do we do, oh, bro? No. This, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I got tired of saying it. Alright, um. <laughs> Fuck her. Uh... So, Yuri, right? She asked us to walk home with her. Who? And then Sayori so asked us to walk home with her. Who will we choose, bro? Oh my god. You know what? I say let's walk home with Yuri simply because we already walked home with so Sayori so many times. And the fact that I don't want her to kill her that right home. Oh, I'm scared. Okay. 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 Do it. Wait, save it. Save no! <laughs> oh my god! Wait, hello. Yeah. Let me take it back. Oh, <laughs> shit. You can't. Oh, oh alright. Alright, hold up. Baka. Baka. Welcome home with Yuri, huh? Why does the so why does the sound of that why does the thought of that make my heart pump? I mean, <laughs> given how hard it is for her to socialize, I will feel awful turning her down, so isn't she oh, so beautiful so and smart? Oh. Yeah. That has nothing to do with what I, what I just said. Aha, so you made it. Cheesh. Oh bullshit. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not like long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Ah. Oh. Need you, Sorry. That's, that that's what I'm saying. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, what everyone is different. It? It's three o'clock. <laughs> Nobody in this club is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. The conversation throws off, and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen at that time? Bro, palm time! <laughs> alright. Alright, bro. All right, I'll let you I'll let you do all the all the decisions this time. All of them? Alright, yeah. so electricity. What the fuck? Alright, um Whisper. Okay. I'm trying to get into Sayori. Adventure? Oh, uh, okay. All right, all right. So I think if I'm assuming this right, oh, what just happened? Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, peaceful. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Fantasy. Fluffy. Pleasure. <laughs> um, dude, uh, comfort. <laughs> Romance. I think hers are, are basic words. Yeah, okay. Um, Hopeless. Sheesh. All right, dabbing them hoes. All right. Ah, uh, broken. Yeah. Well, we really want Sayori. Marriage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. Oh, okay. Oh. You know what I find odd? Monica's in here. Hmm. Special. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what. That's what's gonna throw me off. Hmm. Uh, 
Oh. Happiness. Guts secured. Right. You sure? <laughs> Question. Where is it? Question? You said? Up, upper right. Uh. Goddamn. Bubbles. Okay. Wonderful. Hmm. Now let's do a uh, sparkle. Ah. Oh. I guess we do a uh, cage. Uh, Alright, I'm fine with that. Alright. Yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna see I'm gonna, okay viewers, because I don't wanna bore you with all this reading. I'm gonna read as not as fast as I can, but just a little faster just to get you the hopefully the poems. Oh, I really wait, hold on. Should should I finish the story? You just play an auto, dude. Just play an auto and I'll finish my story. Oh true. Yeah yeah. You don't have to kill yourself. Yeah, just put on auto. I'll right. no, just tell my story. Alright, so anyways. So yeah, I, I couldn't see my coworkers dating each other, especially how they are. Um, won't really give too much background information, but if I was to like uh, put them in areas, they're, the guy it was kind of a beta. Like I hate using that word, but he really is. So I'm like, I I literally describe what kind of guy, not what he looks like, what kind of guy she's into, and I got it on the T. Mm. And, it, and, and I knew I was right because she had this sheepish smile where like, oh damn, you got me. So, I want to say for like a whole two weeks, he was kind of trying. But he was like doing oh, beta behavior. Like he wasn't being like upfront about it. He was like delaying it. It was annoying. You know? It's like everybody in their grammar school phase. I guess he never did. got out of it. So eventually, uh, she got out with another coworker, which is like almost exactly what I described, except like he had a beard. That was the only like physical attribute that uh, she didn't even like. She didn't like guys with beards, and I guess he was the exception. Mm. Yeah. So and throughout throughout the uh, um, I was gonna say throughout my whole dating career, I guess that's what you call it. I, I understood. That I dated really different types of girls. I dated um, uh, uh, energetic, impulsive ones. I dated uh, a smart one, quiet, reserved one. Um, I've dated an independent one, and I've dated a manipulated one. And I dated a childish one, and I dated one that had uh, um, insecurities and. Uh, like really bad insecurities, not just like common ones. And um, controlling. Yeah, it's pretty. I think that's every. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like they were, they were like very distinct from each other. And out of all of them, I like the energetic one, just simply because there was never a time where we were together, and I just didn't enjoy her company. Because hmm. sometimes you have those moments, and like. I was so confused. I'm like, yo, is this what love is? Like, but I was too young to know, and uh, so I don't consider that. But out of all the girlfriends, I liked her the most, just simply because um, she had that bright personality that really gravitated. Like, I, if I was to describe her, it would be like this one, like she literally, and everybody around her. Mm. Which is weird because I never found something. Give me a second, like, Kenny. I don't know why. Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm hungry. And my parents always interrupt me. I'm sorry. All right, so we continue. Ugh. All right, where were we? What? 
I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of the case. Eh? You're spacing out again. Oh. Ah, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. She's worried about me too much. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glanced at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else, but the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approached Monica, who was shuffling through some papers at her desk. Sergio, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly, idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not, the, I'm not the one asking you, Surgeon. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really, really liked this. She's oh God, always talking to me about things that bother her. But this time, when I asked her, she really, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not her real problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about my, the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe she had the thing on her mind is you, Surgeon. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sorry talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? Uh -huh. She's been so much happier since you joined the club. Oh, it's like an extra light was turned on inside her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. Not any different than it, it, it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Surgeon. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as a, so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Huh? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I try to talk to you, so I try to think about it for, uh, for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said she'd forget about it, but I, always, I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of her head. Monica stands up in front of her desk and walks across the room where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from here. I sigh and sit myself sound? down. What is that sound? I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much I do care about her, then I'm letting this weigh down, me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's mm. nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Can we read the poems, yo? Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share <laughs> poems now? <laughs> I'm excited. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact, eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alright, bro. The moment of truth. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> So we always gonna start with Monica. Because she's very interesting if you know if you get the gist. So here we go. Yeah, I wanna <laughs> <laughs> Hi Surgeon. Have you uh, thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and your poems have been getting more and more similar to each other. Where? Because this guy here. Yeah, this this game is fucking with me now. I'm surprised. Yo, you chose Sayori the whole poem, bro. No, no, no. I don't think it matters, to be honest. It doesn't really matter because I remember in one of the playthroughs. Which one? The first one. I can't tell which one it was because I. There was one where it was catered to Yuri, and it was still like, oh no, it was the second one. It was so it was catered to Sayori, and then it like, um, no, no, to Yuri, and then once well, we get up to that point where like, all right, we're expecting something else, and she's like, oh yeah, you like Sayori. And I'm just like, what? What oh, do you mean? Oh, sorry to interrupt you, but here we go, the juicy shit. Surgeon, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Button up that, button up that, that shirt all the way to your tits, and then she all bunches it again for you to see. I, I don't know, man. All right. 
Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something had happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sayori's been acting so much happier ever oh, since you joined the club. Monica? She's rubbing me off. She's rubbing me off the wrong way. What could have been, happened all of a sudden? I don't mind that. <laughs> well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my phone with you now, alright? Alright, Kenny! Oh, uh. I'm, I'm putting on my glasses right now. <laughs> you read it, okay? I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Right. I'm kind of, not gonna lie to you, I'm nervous to read this. Because these first two Wait, have hold been. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got the perfect song. Yo, stop keeping the viewer from waiting, bruh. Can't rush perfection, my dude. Alright, play it. Err. Alright. Here we go. Oh, it's very simple. The lady who knows everything. An old tale. Tales of. Wow, that's annoying. Of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. No, it's not short because look, it's a scroll. Yeah. Um, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was well, ever saw. And here I am, a feather. Hmm. Last, uh, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Hmm. <laughs> day after day, I search for that beak. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. What? But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Twilight sky. Um. Till one day the wind ceases to blow. I'm sorry. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill. Expression. Huh? But a hand catches me between. Okay, the catch ha catches me between the thumb and forefinger. That feels uncomfortable. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her hands and find no end to gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only possible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up a ghost. Hmm. Okay. I like this poem. I yeah. actually genuinely like this poem. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that gives life meaning. Not to get too philosophical, philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote. Yeah, cause I was nervous to readers, yo. Cause the first two were getting deep, deep. You feel me? Yeah, I think, I think it was a, I think that was a bait poem. Yeah. From the creator. No, she yeah. probably thought we we're gonna whip out our pico de gallos. <laughs> but lucky for us, we, we homies, so we don't do that. Oh, so playing, look what he says. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. The fourth wall has been broken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are in two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh, her advice, remember how the other one was kind of weird? What was her advice? Remember the other one was like, oh, make sure to save before you regret a decision. Because if you don't save, things might get a little out of hand. And she's like, why am I even telling you this? This isn't even part of the... This isn't This isn't even re, uh, relating to writing. We were like, what? <laughs> okay. Yo. I want to stop coming in without knocking the damn door. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because your fate is not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because listening of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want you to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Damn, we got you baited, bro. <laughs> I hate that. We, I, This game really messing with me. Alright, uh, your turn. Who do you want? 
Um, Yodi, of course, bro. All right. Take the best for last. Like mm -hmm. Well done, Surgeon. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has, here's, has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this is a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. Some shame. But it's been getting, but it's been fun getting to know everyone in the writing, and I guess doing so my, some myself, writing myself. Well, some have you learned about yourself, surgeon? Eh? Well, you know, like how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And if you, even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome? How unlikable of me. What is going on? You did that, it makes me laugh. It's not as bad as you're making a sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. But I respect women, yeah? As I'm saying, I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these sort of conclusions. She would be a bad girlfriend, by the way. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking. Being disliked. She would be a horrible girlfriend. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright, do you want to share your poem now? Okay, here. I got this. It's the poem is called Beach. <laughs> okay. Alright. A marvel millions of years in the making. Where the womb of... Yeah, I think that's a reference to um, how our beaches are made. Because technically there is no sand until the waves start hitting the rocks on the cliff side. And then slowly it chips away. And that's why you see it's now sand. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Interesting science fact. Okay. Anyways, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless picnic. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. Where the sand is with, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundation? Yo! <laughs> Yo, I'm not. Okay. All right. Let's not think dirty. Yeah, word. Foundations until you give in. Or will it sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the formation wraps around my ankles. <laughs> God damn it. Where my toes squish into the sand. Salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle. Yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the me and Huh? Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward and I return to Earth forevermore. Yo. That was pretty sensual. I don't know, bro. I, it might have been, or like I said, maybe just getting too nah, dirty. No, 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 no. That was definitely her playing with her uh, sand castles. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm aware that this speech is kind of a inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that you you say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Nasuke and I, well, it was an amuse. It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Nasuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I supposed to be better. I supposed to be better. Bleh, I supposed to better compare the differences in our <laughs> writing styles, our thought processes. Let's go with it. I don't know, man. I'm getting tired of reading this bullshit. Anyway, it was her idea. Not her. It's no surprise that she wants to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a, p a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Ah, uh, yeah. Bay next. I'll let you read this one. I need to, um, <coughs> recover my throat. Alright. This one's alright. Alright. Well, yeah. 
about as good as yesterday's anyways. Yeah. You know, I wanna hit it with the chair, bro. I see what you're going for, but it's not really my style. You guys are fuck. That was so bad, fucking aggressive. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're trying a little bit. I mean, you have yet to catch his hand. Well, of course, I'm, I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in me? Mm. Isn't that more of a compliment? Eh? Sorry, I almost burped. No, gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us is the, in this club has to make sure you're not slapping off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just daring me anyway? That's um, not like you would actually do. Yeah, you're right. What should we It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with. It. Interesting. <laughs> Asuki's elbow connects with me. Oh. Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after. Mm. Hey, my name is Chris Hansen. Take a seat over there. <laughs> I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. Ha 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 ha. Da da da. Ha ha. Oh. How the hell do you call that a joke? Hey, whoa, whoa, PG-13, yo. Word. That seriously hurt. Maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of... I should really just watch my mouth loud. Anyway. Atsuki hey, holds her palm out, so like nothing ever happened. I my turn. I my turn. I'll be... Whoa! All right, let me read this, yo. All right. Well, let me read this. Let me read this. All right. All right. The poem is, I'll be your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> your mind is so full <laughs> and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with a brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you're daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile Sorry. of sand. Oh, dude. There you go. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a photo, well, <laughs> footprint trail. Set your free in my windly sail. And remember the reasons why you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll be the female dog that washes your. <laughs> I was about to be like, stop saying beach. <laughs> I'll be the female dog that you didn't dream about each day. I'll be the female <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Heart leap in a way you thought I had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own each your own escape, you learn to love yourself again. Hmm. Hmm. Did she brainwash you? I think this sounds like... I it sounds like she brainwashed you. Because think about it, look. Mean? Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy cell. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the, be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I don't know. The it, last part makes me think like she's trying to learn her, her love herself again. Maybe the, she's realizing like she's pretty um, homophobic in this sense. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. But like, I think she is by curious, if anything, and she's rejecting it. 
So Amy and herself is her. She's disgusted with herself. Maybe it's not really another person. And she's like, she this is the 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 limelight. Or like you see the dark side of her, and now you see the light side of her. Maybe she she um wants to uh to ex experiment. You know what I'm saying? Yo, bro, you get yo. We're getting deep into this. Because if you think about it, right? She's really being aggressive towards us, but to the other female, she kind of isn't. It gets really emotional to all the people. Yeah, you're right. Maybe she's closeted by her. Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Oh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic and trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. It's just that I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of me metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. All right, now for Bay. Hmm. All right. This is your best one so far, yo. She keeps saying that about every poem, yo. <laughs> it's really, really nice, surgeon. Er, thanks. <laughs> Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Eh, of, of course, everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want you to see smiles on your face. Well, all right. Hey, Surgeon, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does, or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. <sighs> Why? Sorry. You don't want you to get closer? Oh, oh! Why did the music stop? Hold up! <laughs> oh, no, save! Save the game! <laughs> save the game. You don't want you to get closer with anybody, with everyone else? Wait! My Pico scared. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress him. I still understand you the most, Ayuri. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, but I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one exciting- Yo, my boy trying to get it! Finally! I mean, bro, if I find out if I, if I a cute girl who likes me, bro. Of, all the years of medical school paid off. <laughs> so sometimes it's just- <laughs> <laughs> Sayori? No. Surgeon, I, I don't deserve this. <laughs> You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sari has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori! I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I've probably never said this before, but I understand what you're feeling not right now. Tell me what would cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, <laughs> she guides herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Surgeon. It's just a little rain count. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. By the way, her, I feel like her poem might be dark. Just letting you know. You heard? Get it? I'm scared. Yeah, I'm gonna go home a little bit early. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? But I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything, Sayori carefully walks out of the classroom. No. I think Yuri... <laughs> Yo. I think, I think we made it this... We made a... Uh... No! No, she's going home with a. Oh! <laughs> wait, wait, we didn't get to read the poem? No, she just left! <sighs> this is the. I can't even say. Get, yo! Because <laughs> she's depressed, bro! You know how she is? She goes 0 to 100 real quick! Right. Hold on a second, is it just mirror to say something? Or did you say something uh, strange right now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You div you deviate from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Sheesh. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, everyone. Look, even urine isn't immune to it. Um, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something ter- Yo. That's it. I'm gonna leave. I'm out. Uh. <laughs> Are you really? Nah. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah. It seems you're right. Ah. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's bound to throw off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just wanted to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and she went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously, of all the times to not go, go home with her, with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I don't want, didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? The surgeon has completed the mission. <laughs> Calm down, guys. 
<laughs> we still got two more. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation. So let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sari will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, I know, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? That's messed up. <laughs> I, I'm useless. No, that's not at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Hmm. Mm. Now, the Suki's potting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never give Sari enough credit, but I can tell things are even getting even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that's maybe the case, but if I can't also be, if I can't also become a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have been beautiful, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to upset the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as, a sh as she stares at the desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful helper, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Surgeon. The one who is truly useless. Damn. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Monosuke and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. So you can always help me out as well. I would really appreciate. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's. Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like mm. Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the bacon on your own. Sergio may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance so therefore he may be more suited to assist him with the direct decorations hold on i never said that yeah you did how could how hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway sounds more like you're just making excuses for surgeon chu what are you saying it will be extremely meticulous work and bacon isn't just what do you think guys guys let's settle down for a moment in the end i think it's up to surgeon to decide how he likes to contribute besides mm -hmm. he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet you know mm. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said. I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Surgeon, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Should we go to Sayori, dude? She's not feeling well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... If it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, it, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Oh, for fuck's sake, we can't do Sayori. What? <laughs> what? They just robbed us. What? <laughs> it, it, it makes no sense. Yo, so... Bro, you're the surgeon, man. You gotta choose. Well... Wait, wait, so what are we doing again? So we're gonna choose a person we're gonna hang out with over the weekend. For preparation, so <laughs> helping them out. Get him this Monica's guts. Her? Yeah. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me. <sighs> Hold on one second. Oh, the music quite out again. <laughs> Yo, I think this is when we make a critical decision in the game. We should have saved! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us, huh? But I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Sergio was the one who... Ah, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Oh my god. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones who are with alternate ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know? We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our, distribute our resources. I know. Uh, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. <sighs> it's technically most logical for certain to help one of you two. So... I guess that's what we'll do. Yo, bro! Yo, it's not really letting us do anything. <laughs> like, it's actually pissing me off. <laughs> Man, fuck this girl. Yuri? Yeah. 
Well, I'll probably be the most used to helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying. Uh, so you'll be helping Yuri then, Surgeon? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of habits, so I think your assistant would be very useful. That's great to hear. Nasuki, will you be able to handle the big king yourself? I mean, yeah, I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Nasuki is feeling a little sour. So is everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. Oi. <laughs> but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Surgeon? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? <laughs> Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. Th no, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> Yuri actually glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Surgeon picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... They're mad sweet, yeah? So, <laughs> I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I had said something bad. Nasuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I must, but I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Yuri. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to stay, say something Sayuri would say at a time like this. Because Sayuri's always helped everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of it, nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better be that. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone picks up their things, I start to follow Monica and Asuki out the door as they chat between each other. And uh, oh, oof, one on one Kenny. Hey? Uh. I turn around, sorry, I realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh you're right, I can't believe that slipped in my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then, you and I exchange phone numbers, okay, and then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense, right? Okay, bro. Let's get in some uh, purple heart. Nice. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I didn't think we were gonna get guts, but the fact that we're right there is... Alright. I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should mat matter much anyway. So I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not really as creative as you are. Don't, under don't underestimate yourself, Surgeon. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? Um, I, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the, with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want you to do. But, Yuri thinks to yourself with an extremely tense expression. You're, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out what, when you're overthinking, right? Eh? Huh? I, I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want you. That's all there is to it. Oh. Hey. Oh. Yo, hey! Do you believe me? I Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a while for a long while. I believe mm. you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous as Yuri finds out about this? Not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Marika said, this is, all, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already I Sunday. What the hell? Biko scared. I've been getting extremely, extremely anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert, introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, the th we've been texting occasionally. Hey, she was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning about, about more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Yuri since she left the club early the other day. <laughs> mm. What do you think happened, bro? I really don't know. She might be plotting. 
It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sari said and what Monica said, it's really okay for me to put Sari's feelings aside when she might need me. I decided to visit Sari before Yuri came over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach her house, I knock on the door before entering myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Yo, I don't want to go, bro! <laughs> Oh, bro! <laughs> Yo, Yo, my body is not ready right now. <laughs> my body is not ready, bro. My, my balls are scared. <sighs> okay, Sari isn't anywhere in the first floor, so I'm sure she's up in her room. It's really strange of her not to run up, down, and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori. Ah, oh. woo, oh. Whish. sheesh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I got scared. Remember, this is a psychological hurt and a t and a and a very hard game. So, I thought the worst. I sit down in her room. Sorry for the smile, but as you can tell, she's different. See, there's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess mm. you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sarah's room is a mess as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and well decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. <laughs> How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be with Yuri today? Oh, she knows. Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sari had already left by the time we decided... Uh, Monica told me. It's only unnatural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan on to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yep. There's more silence between us. Sari stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. If you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't find it for me. Gosh. I know you too well, so... Sorry, smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, surgeon. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and I accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been so worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come over. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have come you, to have you come over today. It's just once you torture me. <laughs> Sayori, <laughs> I got scared by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, surgeon. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. See what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say, aren't you, Surgeon? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, <laughs> I've really had, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm all late to school every day? Because in most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am, dude? What the hell is going Yo, on? What's going on? What why? Do you mean? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make Yo, other people? Yo, I'm to watch it real quick. <laughs> This is the game, 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 game. <laughs> Why Yo, make... she's doing 65 on the school zone. What's she doing? Why make other people put their energy and oh, caring yeah. to waste yeah. by having time spent on me? That's what it feels like. And that's what I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. Oh. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible Siri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why, Sayuri? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It's almost like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I wouldn't have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Surgeon. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung around swung against my head <laughs> that's why i wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me but then i discovered something else too seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club it feels like a spear going through my heart so that's why that's why the side of the world just wants to torture me everyone path every path leads to nothing but hurt <laughs> you're right that i don't understand i don't understand your feelings at all sayori but i don't need to understand whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting that's what i'll do no surgeon there's nothing Nothing at all. The only thing that I could help as if is if everything could be like it always was. But I always selfish. If I finally showed you what a horrible person I am, tears streak down Sayori's face. 
I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm oh my god, you're dragging it. I'm just weak and selfish, that's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments, because I deserve every last one. Yo, just kiss her, bro! Without thinking, I once again grab sorry soldiers. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Whoa. Uh, surgeon, Sayori, Whoa. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Surgeon? Surgeon isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sarah's arms remain at her side. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Surgeon, I... Sayuri barely managed to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I wanted her to know that I care. If you have... If you have it in, if you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what it needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's not anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Jen Lee Sayuri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of the feelings. my feelings, surgeon. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayuri lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all, it all with you? Uh, no. Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry, you wipes your eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the where, one where I have all the plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want... Do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too, too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I'll look forward to it. Bro, what happened? I don't know, dude. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I say goodbye, Sayori, and... I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling, still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it once Yuri is about to come over, too. Just think Say I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying about it too much. And we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. <sighs> As I approach my house, it seems something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah... Thank goodness, you're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I just started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried home more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked of you to buy as well? Yeah, perf pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Ah, oh, no. I would be really embarrassed in my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking of for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, so um, should we get started? Ah, yes. Um, I have a few things planned for that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood light, mood lighting, our, our math therapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know you planned on taking it that far. Yo, facts. <laughs> yeah, this is, alright. I gotta cap. This sounds like those cheesy... Um, stories when he was like, this is how I plan to lose my virginity, head ass. Yo, facts, of course. I want to help you take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess, I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, I don't need you to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Yeah, the more we play this game, the more I feel like... The more you start feeling bad for these people, right? Like, you don't want to flirt with Yuri because you know what's going on with Sayori. Nah, I just... I, I feel weird, dude. I feel like Chris Hansen is, like, ready to... I brought some things for the relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh, yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri emerges through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black <laughs> paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? 
Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with that arom aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it pu permeate through, the, through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This one, this is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I choose jasmine for the event because it provides more than the relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our palms? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearing and enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are these for? Well, did you purchase your or origami paper I asked you for? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Sheesh! Oh yeah? What would be what would those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the, of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles her red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when, than when it's just the two of us? Ooh. Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something like that she enjoys. Here's a marker, surgeon. You can write it any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of rib ribbon to her desired mm. length. Then she reaches into her bag more and more, once pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle is an intricate pattern of ways et etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's not, that's not ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, well... Ugh. Embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it is weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each your own, you know? And you promise you won't be weirded out? Yeah, I promise. Alright. The Wait, wasn't this the butter knife she was talking about with the raccoon? Um, I don't think a butter knife is that sharp. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think of it. We I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just, I just find it. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. This one, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It isn't, isn't it? You relax your expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with, with the handle f facing me. It take, I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious, off his and I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Sure, Jen! Why do you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This kind, this knife is extremely sharp. I can cut through skin like it's paper. You, <laughs> What the freak? Kenny, if this girl told you that, like she has knives and shit, would you trust her? I mean, I, I mean, like in real life. Yeah. See why not? Because like, okay, it's a yes and no. Yes, because like, you know, she can defend herself. No. No, because. She Whoa. Was well, sorry. Um. So my bad. I just cut you off. So this guy was like, "Oh, if it disturbs you so much, let me wash it off." And this, look, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth, and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I simply pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. She's a serial killer. Yo. Who does that, bro? If I see if I see you bleeding, I'm not gonna lick your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri lowers her head and her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, it was a little weird. It took me by surprise. But I guess she was trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? It might be a little stupid thing to do, but do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Oh my god. What is happening? We went from a girl who's depressed as hell to, a, to some weird shit right now. Surgeon? 
Did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. It's not for the sweet aroma of Jasmine Isle, and air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Surgeon. Yuri giggles shyly. Huh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, I don't think I need one, actually. It's like a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's, re that's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We, re we each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Oh my god, meanwhile, continue to make progress on the paper. We done? Alright, you know what? I'm gonna finish this part two here, because I'm pretty sure this is like two hours. So guys, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna save this right here. We'll continue this tomorrow. It just got very otaku for me, and I'm getting hungry, and I'm starving, and I'm sweating. So yeah, uh, this is Kenny and JC signing off. I hope you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you do, just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Again, this is already 18, because me and Kenny are very mature. So, <laughs> so Kenny, you want to say goodbye? Yeah, um... Like your thoughts? I don't know, bro. This game is like... It feels like... It feels like I'm expecting more, and when something happens, I'm just like... Oh! Right? And then when something really happens, you're just like... Oh. Like, it just... I don't feel... I don't feel it's like a psychological... Man, I mean, dude, you saw the glory hall. We saw the poems. <laughs> So maybe we're overthinking things. Maybe because we have so much high expectations, but we'll keep on playing tomorrow, guys. Yeah, so, probably, probably. Yeah. So this is JC and Kenny sending you off. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye. Peace out.